Abram, God's plan to bless the nations. Do you remember how God destroyed the earth in a flood and started over with only Noah and his sons and their wives? Well, Noah's son named Shem had lots of children, and those children had more children, and then those children had more children, and on and on and on for ten generations. And then a man named Abram was born. One day when Abram was an older man, the Lord said to him, Abram, I want you to get out of here. Leave your home, leave the people you have called family, leave your dad's house, then go to a land that I will show you. After that, I will make you into a great nation. When people hear your name, they will think, now there is a man who is blessed by God. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And not only that, I also have a plan to bless all the nations on earth through you. God was telling Abram to pack, pack, pack up and move far away from his home, away from his dad's house, and from everything that was familiar to him. And do you know what Abram did? He took his wife, his nephew Lot, and his servants, and he packed, packed, packed up all his stuff and left. He didn't even know where he was going, but he trusted God to lead him one step at a time and get him wherever God wanted him to be. Abram looks forward to foundations. Abram walked and walked to get to the new land God was giving him. When he reached this land God had promised, called Canaan, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, Here it is, this is the land I will give your children and all the children after them. So Abram stopped and built an altar there to worship God. So there Abram was, standing on the land God had promised would be his. But as Abram looked around, he noticed something that some people might call a problem. There were still lots of other people living in this land of Canaan. And at this point, God wasn't making those people leave. Abram had packed up and left his old house and all the familiar people and places around him. And now he didn't have a house or a piece of land to call his or to call home. He was a stranger in a strange and foreign land. But God was blessing Abram, just as he had promised. Wherever Abram went, he was getting more and more animals and herds and tents. But being traveling shepherds with more animals and herds and tents meant it got crowded at times. Lot's herdsmen started to fight with Abram's herdsmen, because there wasn't enough land and water for both of their flocks and herds. This fighting was not okay with Abram. So Abram told Lot, Pick whatever land you want, and I'll take whatever's left over. If you pick the land in the east, then I'll take west. Or if you take west, then I'll take east. So Lot looked around and saw that one direction looked like a beautiful garden. So he picked that very best land for himself and left. But Abram didn't mind. He wasn't going to be greedy about the land God had given him. After Lot left, God said to Abram, Hey, Abram, now I want you to look in every direction, to the north, south, east, and west. I'm going to give you and your children all the land that you see. It will all be yours forever. You are going to have so many children that they'll be like all the sand on the seashore. Have you ever tried to count sand on the seashore? It's a whole bunch. Now get up and walk around the land I will give to you, God told him. So Abram pulled, pulled, pulled up his tent pegs, packed up, and moved again. But Abram didn't miss that old home or old country he'd left. If he had, God would have given him the chance to go back to it. But he wasn't really looking for a comfy house or a big piece of land. Instead, Abram was longing for a better home and a better country, a heavenly one. Abram was looking forward to a city with strong, solid rock foundations. And he wasn't looking for a city that man would build, but a city whose architect and builder would be God. Abram trusted and believed God even though he was only seeing God's promises from a distance. Abram knew he was a foreigner and stranger on the earth. So even though Abram had to keep move, move, moving his tents as a stranger in a strange foreign place, 
Abram made his home in the land God promised. He just made his home as a traveler, knowing that one day the promise for a real home on a strong, immovable foundation would happen. When you believe God, even though there seems to be a gap between what you see and what God said is true, that's Keep watching with heaven eyes, and you'll see that for Abram, that together with us, everything will be perfect. Abram and Melchizedek, two men who understood each other. Lot and his family had gotten into bad trouble when they moved away from Abram. They had put their tents near the very sinful, wicked people of Sodom. Then Sodom's king went to war with some other bad kings, and the other bad kings won the fight. They took the people of Sodom, including Lot and all his family and all his stuff. But Abram wasn't going to let that happen to Lot. So he went and fought the bad kings and got back Lot and his family and all his stuff. While Abram was saving Lot from the other bad kings, he ended up saving the people of Sodom at the same time. So the king of the sinful, wicked people in Sodom wanted to meet Abram. The king of Sodom went out to meet Abram. But the bad king of Sodom wasn't the only king Abram met that day. Abram also met a special king named Melchizedek, king of Salem, which means king of righteousness, king of peace. Melchizedek brought Abram some bread and juice. Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High God. He blessed Abram, saying, May the Most High God, the creator of heaven and earth, bless you, Abram. Worthy of praise is the Most High God, who allowed you to win over your enemies. Abram smiled, smiled, smiled. Melchizedek was right. Abram hadn't won the fight against the bad kings because he was such a good fighter. No, it was God who won the fight for Abram. Somehow Melchizedek had known that. Abram smiled because now he knew that Melchizedek must be God's friend too. And if two people are both friends of God, that makes them friends of each other. Abram knew Melchizedek was a very, very special person. So he gave him a gift. Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything he owned. Do you know what a tenth means? It means if Abram had a hundred pieces of gold, he gave ten of them to Melchizedek. And if Abram had a thousand sheep, he gave a hundred of them to Melchizedek. <coughs> Abram owned a lot, so he gave a big, big, big gift. After that, the bad king of Sodom said to Abram, just give me the people of Sodom back, but you can take all the stuff and treasures for yourself. But Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I promise the Lord, the most high God, creator of heaven and earth. He turned and gave a knowing nod at Melchizedek, that I am not taking anything from you, not even a thread or a shoestring. It is God who has blessed me with everything I have. I don't want people to think that the king of Sodom made me rich. Then Abram walked away. Abram knew that all of his victories and every other good thing in his life came from God. And Abram wanted to make sure that the whole world knew it too. Abram becomes Abraham, the father of the stars. After Abram refused to take rewards from the evil king of Sodom, God talked to Abram. He said, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your protection. I am the one who will reward you. Abram had a question about that. Lord, he asked, What will you give me since I still don't have any children? Since you have not given me a child, then once I die, a servant of mine will get everything that you've given to me. That's not what will happen, God said. You will have a son. God took Abram outside the tent. It was nighttime, and God told him, Look up into the sky and count the stars, if you are even able to count them. 
Abram looked up at the sky and smiled at God. Of course Abram could not count all the stars. He would have to stand there all night to even count the stars in one tiny little part of the sky. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of stars shining bright in the middle of a black, black sky. That's what your children will be like, God said. To some that may have seemed impossible, but Abram believed God. He was absolutely sure that God could do anything he promised. And when God saw that Abram believed him with such a deep faith, he thought, ah, Abram really does love me. A few days later, God talked to Abram again. God said, I am the one who brought you to this place. It is far, far, far away from where you were born. But I brought you here, Abram, because I want this land to be yours. I am giving it to you. Wow, another amazing promise. Abram said, can this really be true, God? How can I know I will have this land? So God made a covenant with Abram. Do you know what a covenant is? It's a very, very special promise that two people make to each other. But this covenant was between a man and the God of heaven and earth. Wow. So God told Abram, take a cow, a goat, a ram, a dove, and a pigeon, and line the pieces up. Abram obeyed God, just like he always did. Then Abram waited. After a while, the sun went down, and it got dark. Abram fell asleep. Then suddenly, God spoke. He was ready to say his promise. Abram, I have made you two promises. The first promise is that you will have children. The second promise is that I will give you this land. But I want to tell you a secret about what will happen a long time from now. Your children and their children will go to live in a far-off country. They will become slaves in that country, and people will treat them very, very badly for a long, long time. But after 400 years, your children and their children will get to come back to this place. They will come right back to this land I am giving you. Next, God did an amazing thing. A pot with smoke and a burning torch started floating through the air between the animal pieces with nobody holding them. God was making a covenant with a man, his friend Abram. Abram believed God even though he didn't have any children for quite a while. But a few years later, God reminded Abram of their covenant. God said to Abram, Keep walking with me, keep obeying, keep trusting, I will give you so many children. In fact, I'm changing your name. Your mommy and daddy named you Abram, but I'm going to change your name to Abraham. That means father of many children, and that is what you will be. And I want you to do something as a reminder that I have an agreement about this. I want you to cut away a little piece of skin on all the men and boys in your household. Do this to all the boys now, and in the future, anyone who does not have that little bit of skin cut away will be cut out of our deal. As you hear this big, long story, you'll see how God keeps his promises to Abraham. God was not just talking about Abraham having lots and lots of physical children, although God was going to give Abraham a child just like he promised. But Abraham was going to multiply, 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 not because his wife is going to have a bunch of babies, but because in time, Abraham's faith will multiply. Abraham's attitude of believing is what is going to have more and more and more children. Abraham is going to become the daddy of all who believe, the daddy of everyone who will have faith in God, the daddy of everyone who will allow God to cut out from a hidden place their affections and connections to the world and to sin. And these people of faith will be stars in the sky. They will be bright stars shining against the black night. God will have a people like that. And it won't be about who your daddy or mommy is. And it won't be about anything having to do with your flesh's skin and bones. God's big plan was way bigger than that. 
So keep listening so you can find out how one day you can be one of these stars.